when I want to address resilience and, and change the way we, we deal with development or we try and organize our lives even, I think there's three key aspects that need to be tackled. It's instruments, incentives and institutions. So the first thing, institutions is, is maybe what gets us the scale I was talking about earlier. If you want to reach many people with solutions that take resilience into account, you can't just take it piece by piece. You need to think about the systems that are going to be delivering that. Now those systems need to have the right incentives to be thinking about risks and to be addressing them in advance. Traditionally we've been waiting for shocks to happen and then try to respond as best as we could. And that's true for humanitarian workers dealing with disaster response afterwards. It's also true for many businesses and many governments just still seeing natural hazards occur as sort of acts of God that we couldn't have prevented. We know now we'll actually make better progress in doing good business, in advancing our development goals, prosperity and of happiness in life if we think about these risks in advance. But then also our financing systems and our policies need to have the right incentives into place for people to make those decisions. And they're often decisions that then need to be telling people to take a risk to invest in advance, even if it's not sure that a hazard is going to happen. So you want to tell people, invest beforehand, even if it might prevent the disaster altogether, so there's nothing to show for the investment, or if the disaster doesn't occur at all, knowing that in those places where it does occur, you'll have such a massive payout of that early investment. So you need the instruments that change those investments. It is true that if you ask people sometimes to donate for humanitarian action, there's a different rationale from the donor side than if you ask for development funding. And, and maybe it shouldn't really be like this, but I think it's a fact. Sometimes humanitarian action is more emotionally driven because you can see the victims directly affected. And I think that's a very human reaction and, and we're not going to change that. But we need to think about ways to say, well, these people could have been protected by earlier action. Wouldn't that be as interesting an investment? There are no political brownie points in the disaster that you have prevented, because there's nothing to show. However, I do believe that if we bring the right information to people, stories about the little girls that sit and they learn to write and read, uh, stories about very effective and very uh, cost, cost effective with low cost, uh, prevention uh, campaigns on polio uh, or the delivery of uh, vaccines into uh, remote areas. If we talk about um, new crops that uh, are much more nutritious, that contain more vitamin B12 so that people get you know, more healthy and that the land can produce more, it actually interests people. All of these sustainable development goals, from education to health, uh, to food, to water, um, they need very precise indicators so that we can say, okay, in that country we had 40% of the population that have very polluted water, that's why they get diarrhea, that's why this, but now we have moved after five years to only have 30% and we will get to, maybe not zero, but 5% in 2030. If we can demonstrate that, as was the case with some of the NDGs, then I think people, people will be impressed and will say, this is, this is worth it, we will, we will get there.